Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. And today, back for another inspired conversation. I don't think I should call him a guest anymore. I should probably call him a co-host. So Frank Jacob, thank you so much for joining us again today. How are you doing, John? Good to be here. I'm doing very good, thank you. Um, this is a, a very, very interesting moment. Uh, even in our conversations, I believe we are passing a threshold today that um, you know is, is bigger than we can probably imagine at this point. But Inspire Tribe, I want to encourage you all right here, right now, please share this conversation once you're through it with everyone you know as far and wide as you can. In the days and hours leading up to 9-11, uh, there was a lot of chatter in the intelligence community. They call this chatter, which means that a lot of things were being uh, communication was being transported back and forth between agencies and, and diplomats. And the general consensus was something is about something big is about to happen. And of course, energetically speaking, they measured this back then. And there was a a strong um, a strong tick up. In, in the general energy on the planet right before 9-11. Then in the days leading up to 2020 and in the first days of 2020, we had the same situation on a much larger scale. A lot of chatter, a lot of very unusual movements, CEOs en masse stepping down, financial transactions, a lot of stuff was going on right in the beginning days of the pandemic. Today, right here, we're at the same point but on a monumental larger scale so this is probably the most breaking conversation we've had uh, until now uh, frank i think you're gonna uh, agree with this and we're gonna go with the buried lead here the new guardians video came, came out the video itself interesting and all but really the buried lead is what it led us to and what it led you to so frank without further further ado what are we talking about here that are so breaking well, they essentially um, brought out a video that was saying they were about to reach out to all those people who emailed. And while they were doing it, their their emails vanished right in front of them and their account was locked. They couldn't even lock back in again. They lost everything. <clears throat> so they were in a situation where they found themselves like, hey, what are we going to do now? And they had this, um, what they were trying to break out is, you know, they were saying it was one of the most diabolical things that you can imagine. And many, you know, we talked about this last time, what could that be? Well, you know, um, as it turns out, the person that they've been talking to, um, they gave him, he has a handle, it's called Gideon. And he's an Intel insider uh, who basically is in touch with what's called white hat hackers. White hat hackers, for those who don't, are listening that don't know, are, those are hackers that, they're professional hackers, they're code break, they're people that are really smart that companies hire to find all the loopholes and cracks and, and places in the software where there's, you know, somebody could break in. So they wanna make their software airtight. Banks do this, obviously, so that, you know, people can't break into banks and open accounts. And so they, they've got this army of white hat hackers and these hackers are working in Europe. And they're working on something that's based on a model that's been developed for the last, I would say, at least 20 or 30 years called universal basic income. And that means, um, you know, that there's going to be like everyone's going to be making the same amount of money um, and like a basic money. But, you know, that things like this aren't very popular with people, especially in the Western world, because everyone believes, you know, to for your efforts, your rewards. You know, it's very communist to think in terms of everyone gets the same flat and then everything's fine. So they could never introduce something like this in a time when everything is going relatively good for society in the West. So as we've now seen in the last, you know, the information density has been so intense in the last days and weeks that uh, we're seeing the dollar crash. We're seeing the euro crash right now. The euro is on par with the dollar. It hasn't been in 20, 20 years. Um, so and uh, cryptocurrencies are all crashing. Um, and so there's stuff going on that's leading up to what they were saying. This guy Gideon was saying is they're going to engineer a kind of a crash. And the point of engineering the crash is to basically take fiat uh, paper money out of currency. The U.S., you know, as we know, the dollar is based on 
nothing. <laughs> it's just been printed and printed and printed. Uh, and so they're going to switch us to a digital currency. And this is also no secret. Now, um, but the thing that's diabolical and is what the guardians of the looking glass are talking about is that they're going to fuse this idea of universal basic income with this crash. And then literally instantaneously, or, or as they say, over the course of a few days, all the transactions will dry up in, in terms of the existing ecosystem and it'll all be shifted off of the swift iban system and into this new software that these white hats are developing and uh and i think what what freaked out as far as i understand and it's also fresh that i'm still digesting it myself but as far as i understand these white hats what freaked them out the most was that not only not just the idea that okay they'll digitize your id They'll give you a biometric ID and they'll put your your bank account information under one centralized system. I mean, that's creep, absolutely creepy, no doubt. But what freaked them out was that they just heard, they found that there was um, a class system involved. Yeah. So they, it was so the system the software itself is called. Um, let me see if I remember it. Uh, CSRQ SM. So C. S. R. Q. Are letters that if you when you when you dig into the material, you realize they're, the class C represents the common people, like 99% of the population. Class R considered restricted or people that are a danger or deemed a danger to society or the stability of the order of society. Q being the people who are quarantined because they're just absolutely need to be locked down. Uh, and S, which they've called the sovereign class. And the sovereign class are people that are free to do their outs. They're not bound by the restriction of the universal basic income. They can make as much as they want. They uh, don't have to worry about any travel restrictions. There's a whole list of things that they're not subject to. to. And what they saw is that there's already people in the S class that are actively involved in um, moving funds into this new account. Uh, whether personally or through their agents, which means that they're aware of it and uh, which means that there's going to be definitely um, and these people are in general, they're extremely wealthy. They are obviously they're, they're the politicians. Um, they are artists, powerful and, and like, you know, six big name artists. Uh, and, and essentially the people that are in this are represent kind of another class, which they're calling the sovereign class. So. Um, leaving the rest of us on the outside. Okay. And Before that's, you that's kind of the chunk of, it, uh, of the really nutshell of it right there. This is, this is high density information, a lot in, in a very short period of time. Let's, let's go back a little bit, just to clarify. First step, uh, about the Guardians and their email address, um, which was weird because it's now a Proton. And so I thought, okay, well, this is weird that this would be compromised. We have now independent confirmation of other Proton users having experienced the exact same of firsthand talking to people um, independently who said exactly the same thing about their Proton accounts. So that's one thing. Confirmed that this could be true and probably is true. We are experiencing problems with our security, computer security, and email as well. Um, and a lot of others in this community are. So that's kind of corroboration. But social credit system, this is what we're really talking about here. It exists already in China. It exists in various shades in other countries, however, on a down low. But China, openly, there's a social credit system. Just like with everything else, um, what happened 2020, 21 was predicted 10 years prior. I mean, really to the point. And so these things are always predicted, and, and this predictive programming has been coming from the power structures. I mean, Klaus Schwab has been talking about social credit system. In, in, in Canada, they're openly talking about this. So this is not something that we need to confirm whether it's true or not. It is true. What is really the shocking part of this, what is, is, is the classes and what that would actually mean, because what you're saying is, and they're planning apparently to do it pretty much overnight, a couple of days shift over, which in a crash um, will be probably like the, oh my God, thank God, you know, we have something in place for a lot yes. of us. That's what they'll say, thank God, right? Because everything, the crash is being prepared. We see this. Um, it doesn't make sense for currencies and cryptocurrencies to go down at the same time, as well as all other stocks and assets. Because in, in, in the terms of financial world, money doesn't just disappear. It's being distributed differently. But when everything goes down, you know, it's a 
it's a, you know, uh, it's an effort that's on a mass scale. So let's dive into this social credit system, or we can look at the video, whatever you feel is, is best to present the information. Well, you know, let's let's watch the Guardians video together. And because basically it's the foundation of what we want to talk about today anyway. So I'm going to get that up here and and I'll play play it. Hopefully you'll hear it. You can always dub it in later. Guardians, this is the most important video we have ever posted. We now fear it may not remain online for long because our ProtonMail account was just destroyed. While we were responding to emails trying to contact all of you, instantly and right before our eyes, all of our emails were deleted in front of us. We were logged out and we can no longer log back in. We were very disappointed and we feel ProtonMail deliberately did this on purpose against us. The negative forces are taking action against us because of the information we have. You now must act. You now must deliver on the promises we made to the brave group of people trying to come forward. As you know, we were contacted by a group who is trying to expose a very evil plan. They needed time to prepare their testimony, and now it is ready. They said they would need our help, and the help of people everywhere, to get this information out as quickly as possible once it was ready. We have included links to their information. In case there is some kind of problem with the links, we will instruct you now to search for the video titled, White Hats Blow Whistle on Great Reset Social Score Software. We must share this video in every way we can. We must inform the world of this plan. We were told by a man named Gideon that nothing is certain or guaranteed. That tomorrow it could all be gone and removed, deleted by the negative forces. That his people, his men who came forward, could be found out and killed. He said there is not much time. He said the best way to save their lives is to share this information now. If enough people see it, then it is a type of insurance. They want to enslave humanity. They want to create a system no one can escape from. They are doing it much sooner than they planned. They wanted to do this after the year 2025. Now they plan to do it much sooner. Gideon told us the situation is not hopeless. He and his group have a plan to stop all of this. That is why we feel so strongly we must support them. They have a telegram. We will show that now in the video, in case something goes wrong with the link we provided. It is Team Irresistereset Group in our video description. We are including everything they gave us. We hope you copy this quickly, in case our video is removed. Someone has created a Telegram group in our name. We have no control over it. We hope the creators of that group use our information in good faith, and we hope the group is not controlled by the negative forces. We have one final message for our guardians. There is much we need to share about the timelines and what CERN has done to destroy the looking glass data, but there is no time for that now. You must know one thing. You must know that the negative forces are unleashing hordes of entities to fill the internet up with lies, confusion, and negativity. Gideon calls them paid agents. He agreed with our own sources that this relates to CERN. They were able to summon entities to flood our world. These entities can take on human personalities and interact with the data on the internet. Some will call them bots or AI, but they are not that. They are not human creations or computer generated. You must be aware, these entities will try to do all they can to deceive you, to dissuade you, to distract you, and to demoralize you. You must resist their negativity with all of your being. Gideon also shared with us more information than he has released yet. He shared things that were so frightening, he worries it will cause people to disbelieve his men who came forward. He said he hopes our guardians will come to his aid, to his side and help his group when they come under attack. We have much more to share with you, but there is no time at all. We must upload this as soon as possible. There you have it. A lot of stuff. Every time I watch it, I get, you know, I just get hits on things. And I mean, essentially, yes, they lay out the Gideon thing, which, we're, you know, we've already begun to touch on a little bit. Um, you know, and this, I didn't even talk about the social credit thing because, uh, you know, the social credit thing is layered over top. And there's even, you know, I'm, I'm, and we'll share some of these uh, screenshots because this Gideon has begun to share the screenshots that the White Hats have, have leaked out, have been able to smuggle out of their op out of their offices to show us, you know, some of the functionality. And yes, you know, the idea that um, you will have money in your account put there. Uh, but, you know, the idea, because it's digital, it's programmable money. 
And programmable money is different than just regular money. Right now, when you have cash in your pocket or even money in your bank account, you can go anywhere you want and you can spend that any which way you want to at your own risk, you know, on your own whatever, for your own benefit or for your own demise, you know, depending on what you're buying. But with programmable money, you're only going to be able to buy things you're authorized to buy. And that's going to be specific to you personally, right? It's like food stamps, but very much more uh, um, um, specific, specific to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and the other thing that's um, interesting is the again the mention of CERN and the mention that this is the like their last message to us. So like we talked about this a couple of videos back that we thought it may be their final message. But we weren't that far off because it seems like you know they've they've tried to crack this stuff out now so many ways and every which way they go they're being they're being slammed and stopped and they're having to revert to you know grassroots tactics to get this information out. So right now we're it like we are the ones that are going to put this information out because the social credit system is really the most diabolical thing because they're talking about rating people on a scale of one to a thousand that means and they're talking about putting feeding people into the media system that are going to be you know um, pitching the idea of social credit as something cool you know so they're going to be comparing social credit scores right and uh, so pretty soon in society, if they have their way, people are going to be, you know, out there like, oh, he's an 800. You know, oh, she's a follower. She's only a 400. Right. I mean, you can you can already see it yeah. <laughs> you know? totally. Right. So but, you know, the thing about CERN that's interesting because we know CERN just recently um, relaunched, you know, and, and we'll get more into the programmable digital currency. I have some interesting information that I want to share with everybody, too. Uh, but but what's interesting is I dug again back into CERN. I was talking to Dieter Burrs, my um, biophysicist friend whom I'm working with over here often, and who had contacts at CERN and, you know, people that actually worked there and actually people that are that were killed when they blew the whistle and others that left years ago because they couldn't take what was going on. And it has to do with um, you know, the surface appearance of what's going on at CERN is that they're using these colliders to um, generate, uh, to, you know, to create these particles, which they believe will explain the Big Bang. And it's in this 27 kilo kilometer long circumference. Yeah. And I, want, I also have a screenshot of how big that is because people in the States don't understand kilometers. Right. Here's a diagram of 27 kilometers. And what you're looking at there is um, townships. Like all these, um, what you see here, all these little clusters, they're little town, little townships. And this circle itself encompasses enough space to cover, a, to cross a border. And the actual yellow line represents the collider uh, circumference, but it goes down 100 meters into the ground. And uh, so, you know, you're at, most people ask themselves, well, so what? So they're so they're doing collider work. Right. Um, but what's interesting meters, is that's about 350 feet, give or take. That's 350 feet below the ground, below uh, a w underground lake. Even uh, this is right. So well, what's interesting is, you know, on the surface, they have that public the, the PR campaign, the propaganda campaign. And, and uh, but what's really going on has more to do with them. Uh, boring through, creating these black holes, these uh, vortices into other dimensions. And we have, um, for example, here, the director of research, Sergio Bertolucci, said the Large Hadron Collider could open a doorway to another dimension. And out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. Right. So this is this fits exactly what the Looking Glass Guardians were just telling us, that they have brought these beings through with Stern, you know. And, uh, and look at this statement here. This is Professor Faisal. He's one of the leading scientists overseeing the majority of the projects there. This is his quote about um, boring through, right? He says, using the gravity's rainbow theory, you guys can look that up. It's a real theory. People are building on it. Scientists determined that slightly more energy is needed to create many black holes at the LHC than previously thought. Until now, the LHC has searched for many black holes where, with energy levels below 5.3 tera electron volts, which is the version that they started with in the very beginning. According to the gravity's rainbow theory, this energy is too low. Instead, the model predicts that black holes can form at energy levels at least 9.5 tera electron volts. Remember, tera electron volts are trillion electron volts in six dimensions and 11.9 tera volts in 10 dimensions. Since the LHC is designed to reach 14 tera electron volts, 14 trillion electron volts in future runs, 
This predicted energy requirement should be accessible for black hole productions, right? So there you have it right out of the horse's mouth. I mean, they are boring through dimensions. We actually believe they're, they're getting through to the 11th dimension. They talk about 10, but um, they're exceeding the, the, you know, the requirement to get to 10 uh, dimensions. And so they are letting things in. And, you know, so you've got to realize that in, you're, you, we have to trust the integrity of the people that are in charge of this facility. So are these Christian people? Are they goodwill people? Are they are they full disclosure people? Do they come clean about what they're doing? Well, you know, there's enough information about about that that you might, you know, be a little skeptical about that uh, if their integrity is really there. Like, um, you know, I'll just give you a couple of, of facts. Like CERN, for example, the name CERN itself derives from... The the god, the horned god, Cernunos, who is the god of the underworld, right? So it starts right there, right? And the town of Cern is located here. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it too. The town of Cern is located in, in what was called Apol Apoliacum in, in Roman times, where a temple existed in honor of Apollyon, who was con considered the destroyer. And the Romans believed that it was a gateway to the underworld. Now, in Revelations 9-11, it says, well, interesting, 9-11, you know, <laughs> that they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. So, you know, it's interesting. They're already, you know, basing the foundation of their facility on this kind of dark underworld, Luciferian, if you will, ideology, right? And what's interesting is that the birth, like CERN is the birthplace of the World Wide Web. Many people don't know that. And, you know, if you look at, if, since we're talking about Hebrew here, the equivalent of the word, of the letter W in Hebrew is W-A-W, which is Wav. So it has a numerical value of six. So the English WWW transliterated into the Hebrew is, well, guess it now, 666, right? <laughs> Interesting right there. You know, um, inter I call these things like, just lest we, you know, not just be like superficial, I mean, um, um, you know, gullible people. We're just calling these things certain coincidences. Some more certain coincidences that are interesting, right? Um, you know, here's another quote from Revelations. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there came out the smoke locusts upon the earth. Right? So what did the guardians just say? They got these, these things are coming out. They're going to be infiltrating our system, digital systems, but they won't be human-made. They won't be AI. They're going to be these entities. And uh, guess what the scientists that are working there at CERN often describe their black hole as they call it the bottomless pit. I mean, yeah. there, there is, there's so much talk <clears throat> always, especially among, um, among Christians or people who are, who study scripture, that there's the theory, either all of the scripture is coming true or is being made come true. There's two ways to look at this either. Uh, and, and frankly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which one it is of the two because if if these things are unfolding they're unfolding um i don't want to miss the buried lead here and in 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 the words of a brilliant communicator whether you like him or not steve bannon you know signal not noise this is all signal there is no noise in this conversation but the signal really to the people the tangible thing that they can do something about in terms of information spreading this is the first thing here because because it's not implemented yet. Imagine if we had uh, if we had enough concise and precise information prior to what happened in 2020, which we did have actually, but the distribution wasn't there. But now people are way more aware, so we have that distribution. I want to go back before we discuss CERN more. I want to go back to the social credit system for a specific reason. We already see social credit in place through social media, through bans, through people that are not allowed to speak out, that are censored. This is nothing but social credit. It's already happening. If you behave, if you go with the party line, you can, you, you, you're free. If you're not, you're not. But this goes so much deeper. If, if this information is even remotely true, and if we can trust even 10% of it, it will mean that people literally overnight will be stripped of all their current possibilities 
that they're so used and accustomed to and will be 100% dependent on this software system, completely digital. They're going to welcome it. They're going to welcome it, John. They're going to be, because it's going to be brought in under a crisis situation, because they would never adopt it under a normal situation. Everyone's going, everyone has too high of a living standard and has too much control, a little bit of freedom left, right? But when this catastrophe happens, they're going to be scrambling. And, uh, and so people will accept things that gives them, it'll be sold to us, I believe, under the guise of, well, listen, we have, been, we have a contingency plan. We were thinking that this could happen. And so we're going to switch everyone over to this now just temporarily, just to get kind of under control of the situation. <laughs> you know, just like when FEMA was brought in, you remember when, when FEMA was, came, you know, the whole homeland security system was brought into place and they used the, the whole coming down of the World Trade Center to basically justify putting this, the country into kind of a state of martial law, which gave them the right to impose these, these by coincidence, you know, worked out plans. I mean, OK, by coincidence, you could argue that it's a government's job to have contingency plans, right? Yes, for, do you for have stuff like a this. bill of multiple thousand pages called the Patriot Act just ready in your drawer, completely, you know, uh, written out? You don't. This, this well, well, the thing, the funny thing about those plans you often find is that the condition that that is like the the simulated um, auspices under which they are launched always by coincidence happens to be exactly the event that then actually happened in the real world. Are you I mean, what are the odds of that, right? <laughs> are you talking about the project for a new American century? Have you? Yeah. Ever so they literally the project for the new American century, a, a Washington think tank. And if you look at who was part of it, the who's who of the politics of the early 2000s, late 90s and onward, the neocons, if you will, they put out this plan in their think tank that they were going to reform the world, the Middle East, a new century for America and how they were going to go into all these countries and, and, and in the Middle East and whatnot. And of course, they said somewhere the buried lead was, again, somewhere in the middle where they said, well, all of this cannot happen uh, unless, you know, or will only happen over a long period of time unless we have a new Pearl Harbor event. Now, yeah. they put this out in 99. No, they put this out in 2000. One year later, they, yeah. had, they had their Pearl Harbor coincidentally happen. Well, yeah. And the plans that they had um, drafted uh, were uh, simulations of what? An airplane crashing into the World Trade Center. <laughs> it's just like... It was all there. It was all planned, you know, it written just like the simulation of, um, well, we know the, the big C word. Maybe we should be careful so we don't get deleted off of YouTube. But we know that there was a simulation. That's no mystery that took place, uh, a, a kind of like a war game or like, you know, disease games or whatever you want to call it <laughs> that took place in Wuhan of all places. Right. Um, and it was like all the languaging was already prepared for the real world uh, implementation of the artificial simulation. And, so, and, and part of this simulation oftentimes is also to confuse some of the non-important players because this is being played out in such real ways that oftentimes it takes them too long to realize this is not the simulation. This is now the real event. This is a lot of a strategy here. There is manipulation, mind control, even within these circles. So we have to understand this. But really, we get down to the nitty gritty here. What, what this Gideon guy and, and the, the people that are working in and on the system and that have leaked this out are saying is this is actually already live in the background. I mean, this has already yeah. been set up. And apparently they're just waiting for the moment when they're going to shift it over. Uh, and, and of course, over the past few years, we've heard this often, we're going to be transferred into a new financial system. So all this miss and disinfo that was being put out about the quantum financial system, everybody was cheering as this being a great thing. And I was always like, why is everyone cheering? This is 100% digital. Yeah. This is 100% yeah. controllable. And no, no, listen, listen, you're here. Let me let me cut it in, cut you off because I'm going to play you something that I have prepared, which is telling exactly what you just said. But it's coming from the mouth of the British finance minister. This is like this is a couple minutes, not long, but I think we should all be watching this. Let's do it. This. Yeah, let's play it. UK is currently the head of the G7 group. That's the world's most economically advanced countries. And the UK currently chairs the G7 group. Our chancellor, who does our economy, called Chancellor of the Exchequer, his name's Rishi Sunak. He put out this video saying that um, what they want to do is bring in this uh, thing called the central banking digital currency. They want to replace fiat paper money 
with digital money as a competitor to Bitcoin and crypto money, right? But instead of being a decentralized currency, it will be controlled by a government. It's digital currency, but controlled centrally through the banks, Bank of England. So instead of having a bank account with whatever, HSBC or Bank of America, you'll have a bank account directly within the American context with the Fed. In the UK, directly with the Bank of England. You have a personal bank account, and you're given digital money in that bank account. These are called central banking digital currencies. The Charles North Exchequer in the UK has already announced their intention to do this as the G7 group. And these are, if you look up... Um, this sounds terrifying. If you look up uh, uh, the Telegraph newspaper... Uh, central bank digital currency, uh, currency that, is that the one down below? Digital currency should be programmable. See that one there? Yeah? Now, what they're doing is they're saying... You know, everyone knows that with inflation at over 5%, it's now 5.4%, right? Uh, our fiat money, the paper money, is increasingly becoming worthless, and we're headed towards a big disaster. The, the Fed wants to raise interest rates. But we're in so much debt that if you raise interest rates, people are going to suffer because everyone, the, the, you know, we're living on debt as Western economies. So they realize that this is kind of the lifespan of paper money is fast coming to an end because of the 2008 economic crash in particular. So they're bringing in these central banking digital currencies. Why is that word programmable in there? So what they said in that article, and the, and the chance to put a video out saying this as well, they've said that this money that you will earn from work, instead of having paper money, you have this digital money. It's programmable so that you can't buy certain foods, or if you do something that your employer doesn't like, it's all in that article. You won't be able to spend your money. In other words, it's not money. They're vouchers. They're like food vouchers. And they can be programmed so that, like the Chinese social credit system, that if you try and use them on a certain thing, it won't work. Say you want to buy a burger and they want you to buy bucks, which is one of the examples used. If you start to try and buy unhealthy meat, it just won't work. You tap, you tap your card, you can't buy the thing because you've met your quota that month of burgers. You have to buy something like a, a vegan meal. So it won't just be money in the sense of the way we have dollars or pounds today. Yeah. It'll be something that's controlled in terms of your ability to distribute it. Which is why I'm calling it a voucher. It's a coupon. But even a coupon, if you have a coupon to buy bread, yeah. you can still buy the bread. Yeah. Like, there's but no... you can't buy, see, that coupon to buy bread, what you can't do is buy a burger with that coupon. It's for bread. Right, yeah? right. Do you feel like you're sounding the alarm? Yes. For people that don't understand what is going on. So here, I'll put it up for you here, yeah? So there's the video. The group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote. Right, so that's the guy who runs our economy in the UK. His name's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And here is the article. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming, yeah? And here's a quote from the article. Digital cash could be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. Holy shit. I'm going to take it one step further for you, John, right? There you have it. I mean, this is, it isn't shocking to me. But it is always shocking to hear it from the horse's mouth. It still has the shock effect. And of course, as I said, what we've gone just gone through over the past two and a half years was a test phase. I mean, this is test phase and they could put a lot of things in place, test them, also test the population, see if their AI models about behavior were right, who would behave in what way, classify this. So when they go live, um, they have a way to already implement all this knowledge they've gathered. And what also I believe will um, will kind of happen very quickly is with the implementation of the system is they will gonna, they're going to bring the metaverse in big time. Because here you're going to have the same situation you had two years ago. All of a sudden, everybody's at home. All of a sudden, people will be, because this will be that kind of situation. There will be no, people will be at home, people will be locked up, and then there will be frustration, whatnot. And that's what opened up the space for digital meetings, remote working in the past two and a half years in, in on a much larger scale than before. So what they're going to do in order to pacify all the people who are restricted class or quarantine class, they're going to throw out the metaverse so, so people can still move freely in the metaverse and just be do it virtually and digitally. So that's how this is going to come. That's the plan. 
The plan is to pacify you, disarm you. I mean, on on a on a human level, break the human spirit, and this is what's going to happen. You're going to you'll be happy. You'll be happy just to be able to scratch together the crumbs that they're laying out for you because you're going to be so desperate. So, you know? so th- I mean, there's no doubt. If if you say this is all crazy conspiracy talk, please, please click the stop button. Go away. Go somewhere else. We have to focus on the real work at hand here. This is this is not years, decades away anymore. We're talking months, maybe a year. We don't know. And I look think- at this. Look at this. This is another thing. This, like he was saying, bugs, right? The word bugs, right? Well, this is some of the information that that uh, Gideon brought out. You know, he says basically. New farms are being built for crickets, maggots, and other types of bugs that will be harvested for the masses. These protein sources will be reformed into familiar types of foods, but will not look or taste the same. Oh, by the way, there are huge bug farms being built now, some above ground, many below ground. Elon Musk's tunnel boring company is doing some of this. None of that is on the news. It might come out later. They're doing a slow trickle, right? And so how do they always do these things? They get celebrities to kind of suddenly appear and be eating bugs and stuff, right? I mean, there's even stuff like, you know, cannibalism that's actually been made, you know, kind of cool with uh, some weird, creepy Hollywood people. But check this out, you know, we know who that is, right? What is she doing? She's eating bugs live on television, you know, and she's one of those typical, you know, mind control slaves that they have in their employ in the system that are ready to be called upon at any time. You know, they, they basically they have these, you know, these are their system slaves. These are their system junkies. They're the stars they've let become famous. Because let's face it, you know, you're a musician, so am I. All those bands that really were rebels that were putting out messages that were dangerous, <laughs> they're gone. You know, they killed them. Bob Marley's gone. John Lennon is gone, right? All these people, they got to a height where they got so popular where if they sent a message out to the world, they would create a problem Michael for Jackson. the system keepers. Michael Jackson, exactly. You know, so what we have here is we've got, instead of them, we've got these these other system slaves that have been brought in and they're trained and, you know, they, they come out there and they do what they're told and they carry their little luciferian symbols on them and they do their little rock videos with all the illuminati symbols on them just to just for the the illuminati to say see that's one of ours you know they belong to us that's our property <laughs> but frank when you say mind control we don't ha- in in the public realm we still don't have the slightest idea what that actually means it means literally being fully yes. under control manchurian candidates so people that can be 100% controlled through signals, through phrases, through visuals, cues that they're being programmed with. And, and I mean, we, we, we will talk about this more on this channel in, over the next weeks. But what that means is these people are literally under a spell, if you will. And so they, yes. and that's why so often they do things that don't make no sense. And you go, they couldn't possibly believe this is good. They don't. They are literally completely programmed. MK Ultra and and whatever has come afterwards. This is an old program, but the evolution of MK Ultra is now going worldwide on the people, right? Well, there's two kinds of mind control that I would classify. There's the um, you know, there's the the violently imposed form of mind control, which you described with MK Ultra, and it's a very it's a fact that MK Ultra, the purpose of MK Ultra was to be able to determine what um, stresses the human body would need to be put under to break its will, so that it then uh, would um, you know would be so broken that the human the human spirit still wants to survive, and what does the human spirit that wants to survive do? It pulls to the back uh, somewhere and hides. And instead, what they found out with the MK Ultra experiments were that they uh, they could replace the personality with another. They could create multiple personalities, and then by violently, uh, like by subjecting the mind control slave to such extreme forms of violence, they would recede. The other personality would emerge, and they would give those people, like for example, they'd give them messages. 
because they didn't want to put them out over telefax, email, telephone, any written form. So they would use mind control slaves to actually pass messages between people. They would, uh, they would, and then the person would come out of the trauma, be resume their normal personality, be sent on their way to, you know, they even had names for them, like presidential slaves and stuff like that, where they would then appear at the next destination. And that person would then violently, you know, subject them to, I mean, it's just, gru it's just graphic, really. It's horrible. But they, this is how they and then they get the information out without anybody knowing it but there's a second kind of mind control which is happening and i had a feeling we were going to talk about this because i you know i wanted to show you something else there's this guy this is an article by a guy called tim foil and it's about we were talking about conspiracies right and you know conspiracies basically to call a conspiracy out in the open is essentially it's not a theory it's an you're analyzing a conspiracy conspiracies are a real thing but listen to this what he, what he writes here about conspiracy the psychology of a conspiracy denier the infant child places an innate trust in those it finds itself with a trust which is for the most part essentially justified the infant could not survive otherwise right logical when you're a baby right what occurs when there is a childish need within us which has never evolved beyond its original survival function of trusting those in our environment who are simply the most powerful the most present and active Trust is placed in the biggest, loudest, most present and undeniable force around because instinct decrees that survival depends on it. In my view, this is how conspiracy deniers are able to cling to and aggressively defend utterly illogical fantasies that somehow when bad things happen, the governmental equivalent of mummy and daddy are diligently working out how best to ensure that their little precious citizens will be comfortable, happy and safe after. Their sense of well-being, of security, of comfort, even their sense of a future at all are completely and completely unconsciously invested in this fantasy. This is the core comforting illusion at the root of the conspiracy deniers mindset, the decrepit foundation upon which they build a towering castle of justification from which to pompously jeer at, mock and attack those who see otherwise. The conspiracy denier will attack anyone who threatens their infantile worldview because cognitive dissonance is rattling in their unevolved brain. My proof for the truth of this assertion is that they won't even understand this argument except to be insulted at being called unevolved and underdeveloped. Brilliant, brilliant um, analysis of it right there. And that's the other form of mind control that's going on. See, we have to realize that we've been gaslighted for the better part of the last century. Since, you know, I believe since at least 100 years, if not even further back, but, you know, you could argue that the last 100 years have been the amount of time that this, you know, that the modern methods of mind control have been perfected, starting with print, radio, photography, photos, you know, and later, of course, you know, Internet and all the things that have evolved since. But it's through this mechanism of getting people, you know, basically they've they've infiltrated our society with people that are in this Borg mentality, this very communist ideology. And the communist ideology, again, is reflected in this idea of a uniform uh, basic income because everyone's going to be equal then. Right. And one of the things that that Gideon says is that um, people will be they'll be upset at first. But when they realize everybody else is in the same boat. They'll kind of go, oh, well, well, everyone's the same, right? Even our stars, right? Even our stars are in the same boat. But what they don't realize and what I guess Gideon is bringing out is that, no, it's not the case. The stars are actually not in the same boat. In fact, even people that are in the alternative media, so-called, they've actually found them in the system. And these people are very well of the class system and they are already capitalizing on it. In fact, they're capitalizing to the to the event, to the to the tune of uh, cashing in, trading in their stocks, so to speak, of one dollar to 43 equivalent uh, digital currency dollars right now. And we don't have that advantage. Right. I mean, let's look at some of them, right? Let's look at them. And also, before we put this up on a screen, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. This caveat, is, caveat. This is coming from <laughs> one source right now. This, this is the case. When you break a story, when you break new information, you don't have the advantage of having multiple information points. What we have is what circumstantial or anecdotal evidence of people that have already come out and talked about the social credit system that are in powerful positions. Frank has covered this. But I want to make one thing clear. We cannot 
100% accurately, accurately interpret what these parameters really mean at this point when we're looking at them, but we will give our best guess, if you will. Right. Okay. Exactly. Well said. I 100% endorse your ideologies. And here we go. Like these are this, this uh, um, today, this is breaking news people. We are the first people on the planet on the outside that are getting this information in a visual form as well as in an audio form. And what we're seeing here are certain people that are considered alternative media icons. You or, know, people or, like, or weird politicians. I see or that. weird, weird politicians. Exactly. And uh, it looks evident uh, from the information. These are these are screenshots. And as you can see, you know, like if you look at the, the bottom, it says carbon score. Right. We're going to have a carbon score. We're going to have a, a vaccine status, of course. Right. We already and, um, have that. I mean, we're yeah, yeah, we already do. But I mean, what's interesting is that the tier system of classes, you know, C, Q, R and S, they're going to have different vaccine status requirements like the c people will be required to have three shots the the um the r people are going to be requiring five shots because i mean they're completely uncontrollable uh and you know so this is they've they've, they've actually broken it down quite meticulous then they've also got account limits account types etc but what's interesting here i mean and you got to be i got to say if you're a if you're a paul joseph watson or a tucker carlson and you see this Maybe you somebody sends you this and goes, hey, these two freaks, John and Frank, are talking about you guys. You got to have the following reaction: either the neck is the hair is going to be standing up on the back of your neck because somebody has broken information about you, which is untrue. Which means um, you get to challenge it in the public, you know. Which means you're going to have to deny that you're part of it. If and uh, the other set up, Paul Joseph Watson. If you've been set up, yeah, here, which could you've been set up. Now's your time to come up. But the other thing is, the other thing reaction is, oh my God, they're onto it. Yeah, which means that all of a sudden, you know, which they, it, it leaves them with only one choice, Tucker and Paul and all these people. You have to basically renounce the system. And the best thing you can do is come clean and say, OK, it's true. I was aware of it uh, because it's going to come out if you if you deny it. I mean, it'll come out and eventually it'll come out. Maybe not ben right Shapiro. away, but and Shapiro, same thing. Um, it'll, it'll come out. So and, and we don't want to do any of you guys a disservice here, but we also want to, if this is true, you know, we need, you should be talking about this right now. <laughs> it's like you should be bringing, why are we breaking the story? Why are you not breaking the story if you've already collected credits, right? This is what it's about. What it shows is, and let's go, let's pick um, whoever, let's pick Gavin Newsom. Okay, nobody likes him. That's easy. Um, <laughs> let's pick Gavin Newsom, the highly unpopular and unscrupulous, unscrupulous governor of California. Um, if we look at his thing, what do you see is his name? What do you see is his biometric ID? So this is something that we know, now know when you have a passport, you know, that's kind of there, but it's not out in the open. You don't see a number on your, but this is going to be, uh, then you see the, the, the assets, right? And this is what yes. Frank talked about. So when you see numbers in there, it means that currently fiat assets or maybe crypto, I don't know, but current assets in the current system like uh, dollars or whatever currency have been transferred into the new currency assets and are already in there. And if they can do it, that already means they are unrestricted because in this new system, regular people won't be able to do it like that. You won't be able to just go out and earn money anymore and keep it in there. Maybe you'll have some uh, leeway, at, the, but, but the general idea is you'll get your digital food stamps, your digital rent stamps, uh, stamps, and your digital essential stamps. And if you're really good, like in China, every now and then you might be able to take a vacation that's 20 miles from your current destination, you get stamps for that too. And then it also shows other like they so they they don't have restrictions and basically if you go back if you remember Aaron Russo, uh, the filmmaker Aaron Russo who broke yes his, the, he broke this story twenty years Did ago. Did he die of cancer or something? Yeah, he died, and that's that's I think why he came out and he talked about his relationship with Rockefeller. a Rockefeller. Yeah, with Nick Rockefeller, where he described this system, of course, in the terms of his day and age that didn't have, we did, he didn't have the language yet. He didn't have cryptocurrency language, right. but he basically said, everyone's going to be chipped, but you're going to have the chip that's going to basically say, you're cool, you're, 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 you're exempt, you can do whatever you want. This is exactly the social credit system that we're seeing here. And he said it, I don't know now, almost 20 years ago, I believe. It was 2002, three, I don't know, those years. So look that up, Aaron Russo, uh, you know, uh, uh, you'll see it. You can still find it on Rumble probably. So 
this is um, whether these screenshots are authentic and maybe they'll rephrase it in 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 tw- through the last years we've seen some things they, they tweak things when they don't work they rename them they rephrase them yes to make them work and yeah see- this is beta this is beta software right and i've been a beta developer you change the names all the time they may even change the amount it may not just be a thousand it might be 1100 or whatever or maybe 1666 or something <laughs> like that you know but it'll, it'll they'll come up with a number they'll come up with a system that that they that that their that their think tank um teams have you know have tried have market tested on certain select groups and these experiments are already running you know in some countries on a small scale they're they're running these things I mean, we obviously, obviously China is the, the large scale experiment and the West Bank, Israel, apparently that's really hardcore. Uh, so, you know, they um, are the on the cutting edge of kind of ironing out the bugs. And these white hat hackers are essentially working on the mega. So they're talking about billions of entries that they're that they're seeing past, you know, in front of them. And they're, this is what what shocks them, because it's not the, it's it's there. It's one thing to work on a bank's internal software system where you know there's a few hundred thousand you know customers <laughs> but it's another thing to be seeing these kind you realize these guys realize that that what they're working on is the kind of material that's been you know um talked about in, in revelations and things like that i mean these are these are kind of like biblical proportion this is epic stuff I mean, right? so often we have said this is the mark of the beast no this is the mark of the beast no this is the mark of the beast you don't need a mark this is not a, but this is, I mean, if anything, yeah. this is absolute because yeah. what they say is if you have a bank account today, if you are anyhow registered in the system, you will be transferred into it, right? Yes. So, you will, you will start doing transactions. Like if you go to wire money to your telephone bill in the next month, whatever, it'll intercept that. And, and then it'll translate it. It'll basically in over the course of three, they were saying, describing it as three to five days, all the transactions that are digital will be converted in, and, and streamlined into the new system. And then cash will be made illegal. So and you'll have a chance to go take your cash in, just like when they confiscated gold, you know, in America. You will have a chance to take your gold in and get cash for it. And if you don't do it by a certain time, then you're lost out. So people will, you know, and and, um, and they will you make it. A they will, by owning gold. You will be, you will be, it'll be criminal to own cash it'll be criminal and, and, and you know the thing is that's what always interested me about the cryptocurrencies they were saying it's, it's got blockchain nobody can crack it blah 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 even the government can't well the government can crack it very easily they can make it illegal for you to have bitcoin and if they catch you with bitcoin you could be facing 10 years imprisonment and a fifty thousand dollar fine you want to know you want to tell me there's going to be a lot of people trading bitcoin after that i don't think so right so they're going to get rid of the, these cryptocurrencies were the experiment to beta test the market for digital currency and iron out the bug for the government that's all they were from the very start that's my feeling and i think that's been vindicated now so let's let's rewind a little bit because here's here's a theory that's at play here a hopeful theory okay because this is where we want to lead this conversation now what can we do because here's here's the thing i mean i've we've already stated publicly what is the hill that we're willing to die on with pride with honor if necessary but we are willing right there's not a snowball's chance in hell that we're just going to accept this and not do everything in our power to promote real sovereignty and freedom for mankind in all ways, shapes, and forms. So th- that being said, what gives me hope is Aaron Russo came out in, 20, in 2002, 2003. Other people came out. The mainstream media came out right after 9-11 talking about chips, talking about chipping children talking about all that and the public wouldn't have it even though it was an emergency mass trauma situation they couldn't i think they already had the technology to do it but they could not do it they didn't have enough cloud with the public so it took them a whole nother 20 years 20 years to get to this point and even though we had another mass trauma event over the past years I still believe they're fighting an uphill battle because the people will not have it. That is truly what I'm hoping for. We see countries now every day that have mass events of, of regular people that are not having it. I mean, Sri Lankans are, 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 are taking a bath in the president's pool right now. Of course, all let's let's be careful here. This could be very well a, a, um, a, a false flag operation, you know. Uh, I'm not saying this, but 
what I'm saying is the people are standing up. They're standing their ground more and more and more. This evidence that we're presenting is to, to show you this is real, this is true, and this is what they will do unless we do something about it. This is what, I mean, this is, yes. you know, Juncker came out many years ago. He said, our, how we operate is, and he was the president of the European uh, Commission, uh, which is, by the way, it's all appointed. You don't get uh, this. These are appointed positions. You know, the, these are they don't get elected the, the commission itself. But he came out and said, what we do is we present something to the public that might be very controversial or very um, upsetting. And then we watch the reaction. If there's no big reaction, we move forward full steam ahead until it's irreversible. That's yes. what they did with the European Union. That's what they did with all the other stuff. We have to. We have to cap, we have to stand up now while it still is reversible, while yeah. it still is preventable. Frank. Clearly. What's it? Know, I, I think that, um, that, but the nice thing is, and this, this ties right back to the very first conversation we had, why we even brought the information out, because we realized that the the way to stop these atrocities is to talk about them with as many people as possible. And if all of us suddenly, like if we are, if you're watching this and you're getting motivated to do something, well, think about what you could do. It might be as simple as going down to talk to your mayor and saying, hey, listen, check this out. This has been planned. Have you heard about this? And, you know, and like, you know, just go and go to go to your governor, go to your senators and say, yeah, we've seen that your name is on here. Uh, do you want to tell talk, talk about this? What is this? They want to give us an explanation because essentially this is going to come out and uh, you either, you know, going to come clean with it now or you're going to deny it. And you're going to, you know, because if it does come out, then we know that you lied about it. And if it if you don't know about it now, we're informing you about it. So it's your obligation as our paid employee politician in the real world, of course, to go out there and actually put this out there on the public forum for discussion because it it's it's all about if the public is informed isn't that what democracy is supposed to be about it's like it's supposed to be making if the public uh votes on something it only really works in favor of the public if the public knows what they're voting for they understand the issue yeah this is why we can take an example from france they're like some of the most educated and well-read people when they vote on something they've usually read and published books about it all kinds of stuff right it's like we need to be putting this information out and talking about it amongst ourselves now not when it comes down the road like like you were saying john but when it's actually you know on the table and they're if they're talking between six months and two years we don't have a lot of time so it is time to kind of go out there and talk to the people who are our public representatives and put it on the table to them and say okay like power of the people is to actually educate ourselves about this we know con that, that um artificial intelligence is going to be a big topic because it's going to take jobs away do you have a contingency plan uh we know that you know this seems to all fit in place we know that we're hearing about social credit systems in china and in israel and merkel and germany's been talking about how she admires the social credit system of the chinese and and uh castro and uh, sorry trudeau and canada is talking about how he admires the chinese because of the <laughs> <laughs> because of the system that they have going nice. over there. Nice, nice slide. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So this is what we. This is how we can take it back completely. It's still completely in our control. We're the ones driving the car still. Let never forget that. But we have to actually take the, the wheel in our hands and actually drive it, steer it, and do it. We can't just be sitting back. My my experience in all the work that we've done with. Christina and I have done one-on-one -on -one with people. When you work with people and it, it's about their life, it's about their destiny, it's about their everyday happiness and all of that. There are two factors that, that motivate people and they're both equally important. I didn't used to believe that, now I do. Number one is if you do not do something about what you're facing here, these are the consequences that you're gonna face. People need to see this. Necessity is an incredible motivator. It is not a vision creator. Let's make that clear. Necessity just tells you I have to take action now or else this is the consequence. The second part is what is the vision? We've been talking about this so often. Let me quickly talk about the necessity here and what I'm saying. The, the Guardians have said something very interesting in the previous video. And again, I'm, I'm not a fanboy and I'm not endorsing the idea of who they say they necessarily are. But important dots have been connected through these videos and through our conversations. For that, I'm thankful. They haven't come out to us. They haven't really 
uh, said anything to help us understand better who they are. But okay, they have said there will be something that will be so divisive among people that will tear families and everything apart. Haven't we seen a test phase yet over the past years where people, families have already been torn apart. Whatever side on the issue you were of the past two years, it has already driven families apart, not often to the part of complete breakdown of relationships, but very much so. But here, if this is implemented, what's going to happen is not, oh, he's class C and she's class Q. No, what's going to happen is if you associate with someone from that class, if you communicate with them, if you live with them in the same household, your own status will be downgraded. Your own abilities will be downgraded. So people will say, shit, I can't buy more of this this month, although I need it because I'm associated with you. Well, I'm going to I'm going to have to cut off all ties. This is the ultimate division. This is the Hunger Games. This is divide and conquer. Yeah. This is the gladiators, the Roman Empire system put in place, cemented in place. People, please don't take this. Don't take this any other way than completely serious. Now, this is this is the necessity moment today. Now, first of all, spread this information, talk to people about it, research and educate yourself. But now what is the vision? How do we actually, and it comes down to full 100% personal responsibility, self-reliance, community, strong community that will, a bond that's unbreakable, a bond that is forged with such conviction that it's unbreakable, that you will never allow it to be broken down by something as diabolical and as anti-human as this. How do you, how do you see the vision? What do you think people can do, should do? Well, you know, you're touching on some important points there because we know that at any time they could also shut off this form of our communication right now. See, look how how effective we are at 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 exchanging our ideas, at building upon. We're resonating on a certain level together. We're putting this out there, and that resonance is going to carry out into the world. If they shut that off, then what are you left with? Well, the only thing you're left with is what you just described, the immediate people around you, your family members, your friends and your community. So if you if you need to, uh, it's uh, now is probably the the best time if you were holding back to try to think about knocking on your neighbor's door once in a while and just kind of getting to know, maybe have a barbecue or something or just kind of break those barriers down because it's amazing. I remember living in Montreal and I'm totally guilty. I lived in Montreal in an apartment building and Montreal's damn cold. So you're indoors most of the time anyway. But, um, you know, essentially, I remember at one point it just struck me. I'm in this building with probably a thousand or more people. <laughs> I don't know any of them. Well, that's not true. I knew the neighbor across the hall. I did know the neighbor. But but I mean, I knew nobody else. Right. So how many of us have have become entrained in our so entrained in our bubble that we uh, we we don't we're, we're cut off from that form of organic community right if they take away cash and there's and they're saying that we're not even going to be able to barter anymore because we've got no methods to barter the only thing we can barter is deeds yeah i'll you know polish your shoes if you wash my car or whatever i mean it it might come down to that but if you haven't got these relationships if you're not comfortable with you know the people around you, then that's a, a, I think a big part of how successful you're going to be in the transition, you know. And look, we have to face the fact that there's going to be people who maybe want this too, and you know I have, honestly I'm quite I'm I'm quite okay with the idea of people f- feeling that way and making that decision, but under one condition that everybody knows what's at stake and then they make the decision. The worst thing is that people make the decision based on an emergency in an unconscious panic state and they go from one fear mode to the next fear mode. So part of knowing this information and it's been this way for I think in all of our talks is to to get uh, to identify you know if you're afraid of something to to get on top of fear because fear is really the enemy here. There's really nothing to be afraid of because we are powerful creator beings. Beings. And the other form of creation, aside from the community that I see, is really vision in terms of what do you actually see um, as, you know, in your future, what does your future world look like, right? We know Hollywood's giving us their versions. It tends to be very dark and apocalyptic. Have you ever seen a film showing 2040 that isn't all dark and gray with clouds everywhere and raining all the time, right? We have to see our world. It has to be what we want. And maybe that's lush gardens everywhere, permaculture, free energy devices, no more toxic smog anywhere. Um, you know, just this, these are the kinds of things that we have to 
set in motion by thinking that they could be real. And then we will implant those ideas into the ether, if you if for, you know, if you want to call it that, you know, and then it'll take root. And if it takes root, it'll begin to weaken the timeline because this is really about the timelines. We're on this timeline to hell. <laughs> and if we don't stop it, if the, the train is already leaving the train station, you know, very slowly, but we can still stop it. But we the best way is really to create our own train and to, to create our own new timeline. And that can be done. You know, there's 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 evidence that it can be done. There is the cosmic support that we're getting from the universe. There's the messages that we got from not only the looking glass guardians, but, you know, I, I, the ones I like, OK, I didn't you know, they're not always available. But I talk about a lot of them in um, in a tale of two timelines and that that webinar. We talk about those kinds of things in there. Like what are those messages? We've talked about some. I've shared quite a few of those messages that came from interdimensional beings, for example, also from the J rods, from people that were channeling. So it's all like harmonizing. So the potential energy is there for us to make that quantum leap into the next timeline, into the next dimension, if you want to call it that. But we have to work on it. It's we, we need to. It's an active thing it's a proactive thing nobody's going to come and do the work for us nobody's going to come and rescue us so we we need to not look at that as a negative thing we need to look at that as oh okay it's a kick into action so we need to get kicked into action and each of us can do it in our own unique way we don't need to be following any templates i think if you go inside and listen to your heart and listen to your your higher you know source information you'll know what your what your mission is here what what you're supposed to do we all have a purpose here we all have our own unique purpose we're like snowflakes you know we're all individual unique beings and we're, we're living together in this cosmic universe as individuals and yet collectively. So, you know, we can we can tap into that collective resonance spirit and that'll increase the probabilities of us manifesting it. Wonderfully said, Frank. Um, I, I, I think this is really a three part process. And if we understand that three part process, then it's quite easy. The number one part is why. <clears throat> the, the most important part is for your own life and for for a vision is always the vision i mean for your own life if you don't have a vision you don't know where you're going and you're gonna just be like a leaf in a wind so you said that the vision what does that mean what does my life look like in 20 years what is, what will my my family's life my children grandchildren's and generations coming forward that is really important that we have and and we we need to remove the blinders and thinking that we cannot create a really optimal future it isn't just to create a future that's okay. Why don't we create a future that's amazing? That's the first and most important thing. <clears throat> and then people say, but yeah, if I have my vision, why should I even worry about looking at this information? Why should I even worry about what's happening in the physical world here? I'm just going to do this all day, every day. Uh, okay, good. If that's your intuition, go ahead. Why we are looking at this information is because we have been led into unknowingly supporting this by not understanding what we are supporting. And so oftentimes a project like the social credit system will have its, its infant phases with something that looks completely different, but you just go, Oh, this is great. Oh, this new app is great. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm going to be monitored here. And I could all of this, the whole smart city building and the whole constant, this is exactly where it leads to the centralization of data and information and control. So if you don't understand this because you don't have looked, haven't looked at the information, you cannot discern. You cannot discern and cannot decide this I want to support, this I don't want to support. And the third step in this is so vision, and most important, discernment, knowledge that you apply, very important. The third part is conviction. You have to stand in what you believe in and you have to stand in that truth 100%. Because here's the thing, the wind's going to come, the storm's going to come, and whether you can withstand it or not is only depending on your true, honest, authentic conviction inside. If you're really 100% certain this is what you stand for, this is who you are, then you then this wind will not harm you. As a matter of fact, it will, ret it will, it will go away sooner or later because all these forces operate with fear and suppression, oppression. That's how they operate. When you're not in a fearful vibration, you cannot be controlled, especially if it's you, your family, and your community. Now there's so much power in this vision. This cannot be controlled. 
So this is an activation phase, discernment, vision, activation. It's really important. This is never a call for violence. Standing in your truth is never violence. By all means, if you're physically attacked, defend yourself. Do what you have to to, uh, neutralize the, 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 the harm. Yes. But this is everything, has everything to do with your mind, your heart, your soul, and the coherence. So please do what you feel inspired to do. But do it today. Begin today. Reorganize your priorities accordingly. We are at a monumental phase in our human story, and we are writing the next chapter. If we don't write it, someone else will write it for us. That's 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 the key here. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> What's uh, nice about you, John, is you cover all the stuff that I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, that's why I said, my friend, but by, by now we're co-hosts of, of these discussions uh, simply because um, I do believe this is what's happening. We are doing this kind of, we're leveling up in these conversations and we don't know. Frank and I, we, we talk a little bit before. We kind of go over maybe key points that we want to cover, but we never have a script. Yeah. And it always turns out better than we think it would because we authentically vibe with each other. Uh, so, Frank, maybe you can uh, let people know if they want more information, because you touched on CERN today, all of that, on the timelines, on how the whole Guardian story really started. You created an incredible webinar. Uh, what will people learn there and how can they join that webinar? Well, it's, you know, first of all, the webinar is something that uh, for me is a way to have condensed years of information into uh, like a, a hardcore It's I think it's about six hours long and it's a complete download and it talks about really it goes in deep into a lot. We've talked about a lot of these things on the surface here and, um, you know, we talk about them to some depth, but the webinar goes a lot deeper uh, and it's, you know, simultaneously to being something that will inform you about the idea about timelines and uh, the looking glass guardians and, and the looking glass project in itself like where did it come from what is it all about it ties in even ets it ties in roswell it ties in majestic 12 it ties in timelines and it ties in to really our time now because you realize that a lot of the stuff that i uncovered in that webinar was going back 20 30 years or even longer and it never really made sense when it first came when it was first brought out and and if you look at it in today's context in terms of what we just talked about today it all makes sense So, and you know, the other thing that's, that the webinar is good for, it's, you know, for, it's for people, I know it's not free, but it's, it's a way for people to, to, to sponsor and help, you know, us and me, for example, just to kind of continue the research, continue doing, acquiring the information, acquiring the knowledge, just packaging it and putting it together in an understandable way. So as a filmmaker, I didn't make a film, but I made kind of a hybrid where, you know, there's like, kind of like what we're doing. There's talking, there's explaining, and then there's some imagery and there's some film bits. And there's like, it's a, it's a really um, powerful way to kind of get past all like, and there's no censorship. You know, I talk about stuff, which is probably verboten online to talk about it. If it's not in a private, private form, especially what, what consider what, what, what's about history, you know, a little bit about history that you would not normal, like I will show you some unconventional perspectives on what led to the timeline that we're on that go right back into the last century, which you might be surprised about. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's all I can say to it. I think it's, it was a, it was a foundational building block and everything that we've done since the release of that webinar still relates really well to it. In fact, it just, you know, it, it adds more and more credibility to the whole thing as we, as we go along, it's evolving very nicely. I got to say, you know, this newest information for me is something which I was saying, I think I said to you too, it's like, this is something we can sink our teeth into. It isn't something's coming. We don't know what it is. Um, you know, we have, since the April 18th event, it's been kind of very nebulous. Like, what direction are we moving in? How are we going to use this potential energy? And what's just been dropped now, this is something we can really sink our teeth into and say collectively, hey, let's go out and talk to people about this because we know it's coming. It isn't a matter of if, you know, it isn't some crazy theory. It's already being put into practice. So, yeah, I think more cannot really be said until our next talk. <laughs> That sounds like a plan. Everyone, please check the webinar out, A Tale of Two Timelines. We put the link in the description and everywhere. Um, 
just people that have come out of, you know, on the other side of that webinar that have come out have been absolutely, you know, not just mind blown, but also inspired, which is really the key point here. I understand sometimes this can be overwhelming when we present information in this condensed way. This is also so you have it and you can come back, watch as often as you need to research, stop the video, go check for yourself. We encourage that every single time. But the truth is, this is what we're inspired to talk about. It isn't always easy. But we know this is the only way. Uh, Truth will set you free. I mean, the application of truth will set you free, really, to be more precise. It is that important. We believe in the human spirit. We believe in the incredible power that only our human spirit can uh, produce. Nothing else can do that in conjunction with the grand creator or source energy or God, whatever your name is. Um, And so this is what we are encouraging everyone to do. Find that place. Nothing could be more important in your life. Nothing, nothing than finding that place of true authentic power and then acting upon that inspired uh, uh, energy that you get in the thoughts and the ideas. Frank, thank you so much for uh, another quantum leap Thank you. Um, I'm so glad we had a chance to talk about this. It's fresh information and and it's just um, very empowering. And I hope that people act on it and that we have changed something on the timeline again toward our favor. I do. I do uh, second that fully. And please, um, let's let's come back on very uh, soon. There's more to be discussed in that more details, more understanding. And uh, as, as things evolve, we'll have more to share. But for now, please do everyone, please share, please send, just send this out. Let people at least have the chance to see things for themselves. Uh, Until we speak again, Frank, thank you again, Inspire Tribe. We love you. We appreciate you. There's a deep bond that Christine and I feel that the whole team feels. And there's an incredible energy that we can produce together for good, for positive, for freedom, for true sovereignty. I mean, they've used this word now, misused it. And we're talking about true, innate, divine sovereignty. All right. We'll be with you again very, very soon. Until then, be inspired, be blessed.